this is the real reason that, this is, it, that it's good to choose the hinge here as the pivot. The real reason that it's best to choose the hinge as the pivot is that way you don't need to worry about any torques from the hinge forces. Okay. So I'll repeat that one more okay. time. If the object is rotating, then you don't have any choice about the pivot point. If the object is rotating, then the pivot point has to be the point that you're rotating around. But if the object is not rotating, if you're doing a statics problem, then you can choose whatever point you like as the pivot point. And very, very often, you should choose a point that has a bunch of forces on it. You should choose a point with a bunch of forces on it because then you won't need to worry about any torques from those forces. Does that make any sense? Yeah, so you choose a point that has a lot of forces on it, so you can um, make the for the the torques from those make will be zero. the um, force the go the forces at the point of application of the pivot pivot. So that the forces will so be, be zero. Uh, point. Uh, it, we know that any force that's on the pivot has a torque of zero. The torque of zero. Okay. Okay. All right. So that was the best reason to okay. choose the hinge as the pivot over here. Now, that does not mean that these forces don't exist. The forces j still exist, they're just, they don't have any torque. So there is a hinge force Y right. and there is a hinge force X, which you don't know, but we know that their torques are zero. The forces are still there, but they're not exerting any torque because they're being exerted on the pivot. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, that would give us uh, those. All right, so we're done with the hinge forces. So far, so good? Yeah. All right, well, then what? So then we need to um, determine the, the torque from the, uh, the, the tension. Yeah, that's the only force that we haven't on dealt the, with yeah, yet. On the rope. So let me draw a new picture for yeah. that. So because there's an angle involved, I would think we would use the, um, use the method on the left. Good, that's right. Okay, yeah, so we got that tension force and an angle of 27 degrees. And we said that when you're dealing with a force where you have an angle given, you probably want to use that left-hand method from the handout. So let's use that left-hand method uh, from uh, the handout. So step one was to uh, draw the force. Well, we've already got that force. Step two is to identify the pivot. Well, we still have the same pivot as before at the hinge. Uh, so what's our step three going to be? Step three is to um, draw the the um, R vector from the axis of rotation to the point of application. So from the pivot, uh, the point of application of the force vector. Oh yeah, vector. Hmm. let me think about that for a second. So that, That's not going to work out as nicely as I thought. Let me think about that for a second. What's going on here? Excuse me, it's okay, I'm rubbing my leg. So to the point of force, I would think it would be okay. here. So I, I don't know if your instructor realized this, but the, the problem is actually maybe a little tougher than he uh, expected it uh, to be uh, over here. Um, so technically, the R vector should look like this, right? Mm -hmm. But that, that's going to actually be quite difficult to, to work with because we don't really know how thick this beam is uh, over here. That, that would be a very difficult uh, R vector to work with. So I think what your instructor was really thinking is that you can treat the beam here as if it's so thin. Let me redraw the picture. We can just treat the beam like a line. I think he wants you to just treat the beam like, a, uh, that, like it's so thin, like it's just um, a line. All right, and then how would we draw the R vector? Well, where does the R vector start? Where does the R vector right. start? It starts at the um, point of the... Hold on, let me think for a second. Draw the R vector from the... Starts the pivot yeah, point. Starts from yeah, the starts pivot. the pivot. Uh, and then where and does then it go it goes to? to the, uh, it goes to the axis of rotation. It goes to the axis of rotation. I think rotation you're misreading the handout. Take your time. Where does the R vector go to? Are we doing, it's, it's step three, yeah, right? Yeah, we're doing the left-hand method, right? Left? I don't have the handout in front of right. me, maybe I miswrote it. What, what does step three okay. say? So draw, okay, step three on the left says draw the R vector mm -hmm. from the axis of rotation right. 
which is the right. pivot, right? To the point of application of there the force. There you go, force. that's right. That so I, I thought you were saying that we were going to draw it to the axis of rotation, but that's not right. We're drawing it from the axis of rotation. Where are we drawing it to? We're drawing it to the point of application of the force. And, mm -hmm. and where is the force being applied right. here? I think the force along is, the beam right there, right, the, right this at this point right, right here right that I'm bottom. putting a dot in. This is the point of application of the force, right? Yeah. The point of application of the force is yeah. where the rope is touching the beam, or the boom. The right. uh, the uh, the point of application is where the force is touching the boom. So our R vector here now is pretty straightforward. It's just this horizontal line. All right, in order for this to work, we have to assume that the boom is basically just, uh, it is so thin that we can just treat it like a line. He didn't, he didn't actually draw it like that in this picture, but um, otherwise the problem would be uh, actually, uh, I guess, uh, impossible uh, to do. Uh, we can't actually do the problem otherwise. Well, he, yeah, well, he actually drew it that yeah, way. Yeah, I think he just got, uh, no. he made, uh, he was, uh, he, he, uh, he probably should not have drawn it quite like that. He, he meant, he meant just to think of the beam as, a, as just a, a thin line here. Okay. Oh, you know, see. should truly do it yeah, correctly. I see. Okay. okay. So, I'm yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, it, it, otherwise, the problem is impossible because he didn't tell you how thick the beam is. So, since he didn't tell you how thick the yes. beam is, we have to basically yeah. assume that it's just um, uh, very thin. Okay. Or another way of putting it is this is like a, a good approximation. All right. So, this is a good enough approximation. Uh, all right. So, that'll be our R vector here. So um, now, uh, so we're done with step three. R goes from the pivot to the point of application of the force. What's step four? I'm sorry. Okay. Draw the F um, perpendicular. Okay. Uh, and where's that going to come? The force perpendicular. Oh, yeah. And this is where your... Um, that that perpendicular force that perpendicular F perpendicular is going to be a line coming up from the tension right like it's going straight up mm -hmm. so that's I would I think, I think that's you mean F it's coming straight up from the beam straight up yes. from the beam to where the to where the rope ties to the top yeah okay maybe uh, is like, this what you're thinking of um Oh no. I think on the other side. Oh, at the, like, like this? where the Yeah. Okay, yeah, you can draw. So in order to um, break the tension into components, you have to draw a right triangle. You can draw the right triangle either right. below the uh, hypotenuse or above the hypotenuse. So you can choose whichever of those okay. you like. So which one do you want, the triangle okay. above or below? Um does it matter whichever No, nope, whichever you like. One seems more in, you know, intuitive to do. Um I was think I I don't know which one, Leah. The one matter? here. The one on the outside. Okay. On the right. Um. Or actually, yeah. I think we'll learn more if we do the one underneath. So I told you to make a guess, but now I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel your guess. All right, I'm gonna cancel your decision. So let's do oh. this one. I think we'll learn more from that. So here's gonna be our F okay. uh, or tension perpendicular in this case. So. Here will be T perpendicular. What does uh, the force F perpendicular mean? Remember, it means the component of the force that's perpendicular to the R vector. Well, I think we can see to that this R is the component that is yeah. perpendicular to the R vector. Okay. Now, um, and I, we should have already said how long the R vector is. Uh, what is the R vector here? We should have determined that. It's five meters. Yeah, five meters. Okay. Um, now, uh, all right. Now, we should always put in arrows. So is T perpendicular pointing up or down? Down. No, take that's your time. Force, that force, that well, that force is, that force is pulling down. The sign is pulling that down. Ah. Oh no, so you, we drew it time. earlier. Okay. Sorry, we drew it. Already decided on that. Um, we decided that the force was going up. Up and to the left, right? Up and to the left, yeah. Uh, so I think you got confused because you were thinking about the force from the sign. But remember, we're not working right. with the sign anymore. Uh, we already did right. the torque from the sign, right? We've already done the torque from right. the sign. Now we're working from a new force. Now we're working with the, uh, the tension force. This is why it's good to draw yeah. a brand new picture for each force so we don't get them confused with each other. So now we're working on the tension force, and the tension force is up and to the left. Well, right. since the tension force is up and to the left, its vertical component would be up. So I'll draw this arrow to show that the uh, vertical component of this is pointing up. Okay. Okay. 
So that gives us our t right. perpendicular. All right, and now that we've drawn it, uh, we should actually calculate it. So let's go ahead and, oh, uh, that won't be so easy here, will it? So, um, yeah, so we can't calculate it exactly because we don't know what t is. Right. But so we can still get an expression t. for it. So let's get figure out what t perpendicular right. is in terms of t. How would we do that using trig? Use a piece um, of paper to work that it'll out. Be, yeah, it'll be um, t perpendicular mm -hmm. will equal opposite over um, oh opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, take your time and work that out carefully on paper. Okay. So t perpendicular would equal opposite, which is. All right, it looks like you're getting confused. Oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, no. Not T. You want us to find T per perpendicular? That's right, but first of all, you have to set up the trigonometric equation correctly. So take your time, but what's the right, correct yeah. trigonometric equation to write down? 